Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs which are relevant from our UPSC point of view and even from your state public service examination point of view. And if you are preparing for any other competitive examinations, current affairs become a very important crunch. So you have to prepare current affairs. So for that you have to read any one national newspaper every day. So here in this session, we are going to cover current affairs of 9th October 2023. So without wasting any time, let us see the important articles. So first we are going to see Delhi edition of The Hindu and we are pointing out which are the important articles that are relevant from our examination point of view. And we are going to see in which perspectives you have to prepare. And after that, we are going to see our detailed notes of today's current affairs. And later on, we are also going to have some practice questions. Wherever it is possible, we are going to give you the practice questions of prelims and as well as mains. Okay. So first topic, it is about Israeli airstrikes pound Gaza as death toll climbs. So this article which is talking about <coughs> Israel-Palestine issue. So it is not a new issue. So even we got independence, that we got independence in which year? 1947. So before that onwards, so this issue of Israel and Palestine is going on. So here you have to know about Jews. So Jews are persecuted minority. Okay. So here you have to know about what is the history of this Israel-Palestine issue and what is going on now and who are this Hamas? Who are this Hamas? So Hamas they are attacking now. So this article is at most important and the details regarding this article we discussed in detail in our yesterday's class so if you have not watched yesterday's class so please go back and watch yesterday's class to get clarity regarding this israel palestine issue there i covered each and every concept that you need to know and if you move on to the city page there is nothing much important in today's paper and you can directly move on to states page so because of elections so most of the articles in our newspaper they are political articles so simply you can leave this article. There is no need of bothering about what is happening in the political parties. And next topic here is Kerala government to move special leave petition in Supreme Court against governor over eight pending bills. Okay. So here if you are talking about how the passage of bill is happening in the state legislature. So in states... We have bicameral legislature or unicameral. So bicameral means nothing but we will be having two houses. First one is state legislative assembly. Second one is state legislative council. So it is the decision which is given to the states. States they had the decision like so if they want to have the two houses they can have. Or if they want to have the single house, you can have the single house. So it is entirely based on the interest of state. Unicameral means we will be having only state legislative assembly. So please let me know in which states we have this bicameral legislation in the comment box. Don't forget about this because it might be your prelims question. Who knows? We can't predict the examination, right? So here, if you are talking about the procedure for passage of bill. So this bill, first of all, will be placed in one house. So I am talking about this bicameral legislation now. So after passing of the bill in the first house, it will be moved to the second house. And after this bill, which is placed on, which is passed in the second house, it will be placed before governor to get assent. So assent means nothing but just a signing of the bills. So governor have some veto powers here. So what are the veto powers of governor? So first one here is he can simply give assent. He can sign or else he can send back. 
the bill to the house for reconsideration okay or else he also have an option like rejecting the bill so he can reject the bill he will be not giving the sign and next one here is he can reserve the bill for president so he can also reserve the bill for the president president need to give the assent to be passed by that bill okay so these are the options which are present before the governor so this article says that there are about eight pending bills are present before governor so that now state government is moving towards supreme court for this special leave petition so here you have to know about what is a special leave petition and which article in our constitution talks about this so this is the idea that you have to know and i hope you got the passage of the bill process and as well as what is this bicameral legislation and monocameral unicameral legislation correct and if you are from the state of kerala you can go with this which are those eight bills like university bill kerala lokayukta's bill okay etc so that you can see if you are from kerala but if you are not from kerala there is no need of uh, going about this bill but you have to see just only what is the special leave petition clear and you can directly move on to this editorial page now so here there is one article it is regarding news click non case so what happens to news click person arrested under this unlawful activities prevention act so here you have to know about uapa so what are the provisions under this and what are the challenges under this what is the criticism or what is the way forward so all these things that you have to know because there is a high chance of getting question in this unlawful activities prevention act in your mains and even in your prelims and next topic is census for a new deal so this article which is talking about caste based census it is talking about caste based census so recently bihar government recently bihar state government released the data of caste based census on october 2nd and in this census data that is caste based census data it said that about 36 percentage of people they belongs to extremely backward class So whenever there is a people who are belonging to this extremely backward class, then government need to play a role. So government need to come up with some affirmative actions. Government need to take some steps to make them to progress in the society. Okay, so government can take now welfare schemes, or government can come up with this welfare policies and programs of the government. so all these things are very important so here you have to understand why we are electing the government so what is the meaning of democracy it is of the people for the people by the people so when people are suffering can government be silent no so government need to take some steps right so if there is no data how can government know that where it is uh, having some loopholes or where it can implement the schemes so for this data is very much necessary so because of this is caste based census data which is provided in data regarding economically backward sections especially extremely backward sections in this bihar so there are about 36 percentage and if you are from bihar you have to see even what are the reasons for example you can see there is increased poverty and there is no unemployment and even in the bihar it is dominant by migrant laborers okay so there is no proper industrialization there is lack in industrialization so if you talking about industries they are mainly concentrated in south india so because of this most of the industries are present in south india so people from this northern part they will be migrating towards south india as migrant laborers to work in industries in southern part okay so this is also one important cause okay so these are the some important reasons regarding this backwardness in bihar 
and even we can see this Bihar which also comes under part of Bimaru states right so it is also an important concept that you need to remember and these are some important perspectives that you need to refer from this article point of view I hope it is very much clear right and next one it is about two fawn all aksa jewels west Af west asian geostrategic architecture so here you have to know about what is this al aksa so al aksa flood or actually this al aska is a mosque so we have to know about what is al aska so you can get a question here so actually this is an important site of muslims so muslims will be considered like mecca will be the holy place right so after this Mecca, this Al-Aqsa, it is a third holy place of Muslims. First one is Mecca, second one is Medina and third one is Al-Aqsa. Okay, so you have to refer this topic and it is very important from both your prelims and as well as mains. And next topic it is about what are the reasons, what are the causes for the flood in Sikkim. So as you all know that about 25 people they were died and many people they are missing and in this missing people even army people were there so here what is the reason the reason here is because of glacial lake outburst flood so because of this flood which affected dam that dam is chung tang dam and because of this what happened there is increased flood like conditions in river Tista. okay so actually you have to think about this himalayan rivers and infrastructure in this himalayan states so as you all know this himalayas are formed because of tectonic plate movements so whenever this indo ocean plate which is moving towards northward and hit this eurasian plate so what are the sediments are present in this 30 sea they had been raised up and they formed this Himalayas. So Himalayas are nothing but we can see they are sedimentary in nature. And if you are talking about the rock structure, they are sedimentary, they are not much stable. They are not stable. And even today also there is a movement of this indo austral plate is seen. So because of this, even today there is increase in height of this Himalayas because of this active plate movements. So in this ecologically and environmentally fragile area, if you are going for infrastructure projects, whether it is feasible or not, whether it is sustainable or not, no. So that is the thing which mainly said in this article. And here you have to know what is the glacial lakes. So recently one report said that due to this climate change, due to this global warming, there is increasing of number of glacial lakes. Okay, actually if this is a glacial lake, it is bounded by the sediments and as well as small boulders. Whenever there is increasing of water in this glacial lake, so it will be, it will be increasing pressure on this boulders or boundaries. Suddenly what happened, breakage will happen that will lead to burst of this glacial lake that is called as glacial lake outburst flood so whenever the boundary which is breaking means suddenly the huge amount of water will be coming so this will lead floods so this is the disaster so now let us try to see this topic in detail okay already we discussed about what is this glacial lake what is a glacial lake outburst flood so why it happened in Sikkim, everything we discussed in our earlier classes. And once again, we are going to see that, don't worry. And if you move on to news page, there is one article here that is GST Council clears a few measures to boost foreign trade. So foreign trade is very important for any country. So why? So if you're talking about foreign trade, which includes imports and as well as exports so each and every country is not self-sufficient so if it wants to it wants to satisfy its needs that is a country needs yes it needs to get the goods from the other countries right so here in this globalized era 
in this globalized era one country is depend upon another country to satisfy needs so that here imports and exports is very important so whenever one country which is getting imports from another country so in return this country need to pay for that right so because of this forex reserves is very important so whenever there is depleting of forex reserves so whenever there is depleting of forex reserves so whenever there is no a sufficient amount of forex reserves then that condition is called as balance of payment crisis so if any country is facing this balance of payment crisis for example recently this crisis faced by our neighboring countries like pakistan and sri lanka they need to approach this britain hood twins one of that twins that is imf so imf will say that you have to do some reforms so that we can address the issue of your balance of payment crisis so in the same way in 1991 india faced this balance of payment crisis so at that time so what are the forex reserves that we have so it is not even enough for the next one week so because of this we approached imf and imf said that you need to come up with reforms and finally we came up with this lpg reforms to come out of this balance of payment crisis okay so what happens if there is a good foreign trade so if we are having the good foreign trade we can increase our exports so we can get good foreign reserves okay or the foreign currencies and because of increasing of exports that we can say there will be increasing of production so because of increasing of production that will boost our economic growth and that will leads to increasing of economy of our country as a whole and india will be the topest global economy as well so these will be some advantages if you are focusing on this exports okay to increase exports government came with a number of schemes so please let me know that schemes in the comment box clear are you getting the points like how to read any article or not and next one is retail inflation likely eased in september but may be higher so what happened here you have to see what is this inflation so inflation is a concept and from this concept you can get question every year in your upsc okay so here inflation is nothing but whenever there is rise of prices in market rise of prices of goods and services in the market and this concept is called as inflation so in this inflation we will be having different types like demand pull cost push and built in inflation and here you have to see what will be the implications of inflation so whenever there is increased inflation what will happens so people they will be not going to the market and they can't demand the goods and services that will lead to decreasing of purchasing power of people and even that will lessen the production so when your production is decreased here the labor they will be facing issue like unemployment and there will be the decreasing of standard of living so whenever labor they are entering into this unemployment so they will be not having enough money even to take enough food so that that will increase as malnutrition and malnutrition regarding diseases in that people will be increased and what happen so there will be decreasing of value for indian rupee and even what happen so inflation will leads to decreasing of standard of living of people so all these will be the issues related to this inflation okay so these are the things that you have to remember and now let us move on in this news page you can see isro performs statutory correction for this aditya l1 so we have to see this aditya l1 that's it so what is this it is isro solar mission and we are going to study a lot of important things regarding this uh, space conditions and as well as weather of sun sun's corona etc all these things that you are going to study under this aditya l1 and next topic it is about prey based habitat dictate asiatic wild dog tiger coexistence so recently one study which done in this manas national park which state that here the big cats and this wild dog they are living in coexistence 
okay it is also called as asiatic wild dog and now in this world page there is one important article it is regarding the earthquake in afghanistan so earthquake death toll rises to 2000 as rescuer search flat in afghan villages so what happened so very high magnitude of 6.3 earthquake which had been happened okay so because of this high magnitude that led to the death of around 2000 that means the disaster it is a vast scale and we have to see which type of operation will be done by or will be taken up by our government of india to provide some humanitarian assistance to this afghanistan So these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. And now let us try to see the detailed analysis. So we are going to see the notes. So first one is special leave petition, right? So what is a special leave petition? Special leave petition is a power of Supreme Court granted by our constitution. So under which article? It is article 136. So article 136 says about this special leave petition that you have to remember. And this article says that Supreme Court may in its discretion grant special leave to appeal from any judgment, decree, determination, sentence or order in any cause or matter proposed or made by any court or tribunal. So whenever any court or any tribunal which is given like any order, judgment, uh, determination sentence or order so that can be taken up by supreme court under this article 136 so it is very important from your prelims and next topic it is about tufan al aqsa jol's west asian geostrategic architecture so this topic is important from your international relations which comes under your gs paper too and this topic is important from your mains and as well as prelims so actually what happened this al aqsa mask it is considered as one of the important holiest place for Muslims. So first one is Mecca, second one is Madina and third one is this, this Al-Aqsa. So the conflict which is related to the mosque as hallways which had been triggered tensions between this Israel and as well as Gaza Strip. So between Israel and Gaza Strip, so there will be always issue between these two groups. And latest uh, what happened recently a barbaric attack launched by Hamas and the Palestinian terrorist group and the retaliation by Israel which has left nearly 1000 people dead. So around 1000 people they dead because of this barbaric attack which is done recently. And in the surprise attack Hamas they launched about 5000 rockets on Israel and the fighters of the terror groups they have also taken Israeli civilians and soldiers hostage. So, Israeli civilians were taken as hostage and even here soldiers had been taken under hostage. So, as per Hamas, they said that, so here this is the start of Operation Al-Aqsa Dilek. So, this is reported. And actually military chief that is Mohammed Dev, he also stated that Hamas launched more than 5000 missiles on Israel and he has also asked the Palestinians living in the East Jerusalem to join these uh, forces and to expel the occupiers and demolish the walls. But here the people, they had not been accepted. And why this Al-Aqsa mosque is very important in Islam? So this is also very important. Actually, this mosque is considered as third holiest place by the Muslims after Mecca and as well as Medina. So here the mosque is uh, situated on a hill which is known to the Jews as Har Ha Bayat or it is also called as Temple Mount and to Muslims internationally as Al Haram Al Sharif. So it is a noble sanctuary for the Muslims. So it also it is also the home to the two Muslim holy places. So first one is Dome of the Rock and next one is Al Aqsa Mosque. So actually they had been built in 8th century. So if you're talking about how this Al-Aska mask, which became the focal point for this Israeli-Palestinian tensions. So the conflict which related to the mosque was always triggered tensions between this Israel and as well as Gaza. So latest in the latest uh, thing here is about in 2021. So the clashes between the two sides, they had led to 10 day long war killing. 
and in that killing more than 200 Palestinians and 10 Israelis they were reported okay and in April this year Israeli police officials they got into the fight with these Palestinians and finally that led to cross-border exchange of fire and the clash was reported hours after 350 people they were arrested okay and they were removed from the compound and as per this work staff they said that police also used the rubber bullets and as well as stunted grenades to evacuate this compound okay so that everything which happened in the important month that is month of this Ramzan where this Muslims they will be going to do this Rosa and Israel's they raid into this Al-Aqsa mosque it's assault on the worshippers and it's slap to recent US efforts which try to come up with the calm and stability during this month of Ramadan. So this is the issue okay between this uh, Israelis and as well as Palestinians regarding this Al-Aqsa mosque. And next topic it is about news click non-case. So this article is very important from our polity under this Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So this topic is important from both your prelims and as well as means. So we are going to see detailed discussion regarding this topic. So what happened? So what is the context? So there is a case which filed, right? So here recently unlawful activities prevention act that is UAPA. So which has been invoked against news portal that is news click. News clip and it is also facing some allegations that it is receiving some illegal funding from China and propagating Chinese propaganda. Okay, so because of this allegation, so they are mainly filing this UAPA on this member. So here recently enforcement directorate accused that this company which is going for even money laundering and this portal received about 77,000 crore rupees as foreign remittances in this 2018-2021. So because of this displacing the status of UAPA. Okay. And if you're talking about some facts regarding this Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So when it was originated. So this UAPA Act was first promulgated in the year 1967. And at that time we had a lot of problems to address these terrorist organizations. So because of this at that time to target the sessionist organizations and to consider to be a predecessor of laws okay like terrorist disruptive activities that is TADA and POTA so we came up with this unlawful activities prevention act and the important aim it is to prevent unlawful activities associations in India so what is unlawful activity so it refers to any action taken by an individual or association which is intended to disrupt the territorial integrity and sovereignty of India. So it is disrupting this territorial integrity and as well as sovereignty of India. And if you are talking about the amendments which made in this Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of 1967. So in 2004 we came up with this amendment and this amendment which added the terrorist act to the list of offenses to ban organizations for terrorist activities so under this around 34 outfits were banned after we came up with this 2004 amendment and in 2019 also we came with amendment so from now onwards we can even designate an individual as a terrorist okay and even organization as a terrorist so earlier we can recognize only organization as terrorist but now because of this amendment in 2019 now we can also designate a individual an individual a person as a terrorist and it is also providing the power to approval so act empowers director general of nation investigation agency that is nia to grant approval of seizure okay seizure and uh, attachment of the property in the case of investigation and this one is if you're talking about power to investigate so this act which provides the power to the officers of nia of the rank of inspector or above to investigate the case of this terrorism okay and what are the concerns and controversies of this uapa so first one is the data which released by this the national crimes record bureau which says that there is increasing of use use uses okay use un, unlawful activities prevention act 
so there is increased use of this uapa act so because of this there is increased number of cases which are filed by ncrb under this uapa that is sometimes there is also misuse of this law and next one is we are using across the country so many activists journalists students they are also have been booked under this unlawful activities prevention act in the different cases so it is also one cause of concern so if any person who is booked under this unlawful activities prevention act so it is very very difficult to come out of this case so even they will be not getting any bail also so these are some important concerns regarding this uapa and now let us try to see the answer for this question that is a legislation which confers executive or administrative authority an unguided and uncontrolled discretionary power that in the matters of application of law which violates which of the following articles article 19 article 28 32 and 44 it is article 14 so this is very very important and this question which appeared in your prelims in 2021 and now i want to give you one main practice question so that you can practice the answer writing also So here question is Indian government has recently strengthened anti-terrorist law by amending this unlawful actual discrimination act that is you can write about 2019 amendment so analyze the changes in the context of prevailing security environment while discussing the scope and the reasons for opposing UAPA by human rights organization okay so try to write answer for this question clear And now let us see next topic. It is about what are the causes of flood in Sikkim. So title says what causes the flood in Sikkim. So because of this glacial lake, because of the breaking of this glacial lake, that affected the dam in this on this river Tista, and finally that led to the floods. So now let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see the context, it says that about twenty five people they had been confirmed dead. and apart from that many people they were missing from a massive flood that resulted from this glacial lake outburst in sikkim so when it was happened on october 4th so because of this flood that led to voluminous outflow that destroyed this changtang dam so which is very much critical to this tista hydro power project okay so now what happened so this power project had been became dysfunctional because of this incident because of this disaster so if you see some details it says that glacier lake outburst floods or instances of large lakes they formed from the melting of glaciers for example let us take this is as a glacier so what happened because of climate change this glacier will be melting so whenever the glacier is melting it will be moving down across the slope so whenever it is moving down it will cause aberration erosion etc and that will form kori or silk okay so because of this erosion we can see the formation of kori lakes or uh, ribbon lakes okay that thing that you will be studying in the land forms formed by glaciers in your geography so because of this what happened so because of this increasing of melting of glaciers because of this climate change and global warming that led to increase the number of this kori lake or silk okay so this is about this thing and apart from that here you can see suddenly there is breaking of free of a moraine so moraine is nothing but so whenever glaciers are moving down so what are the sediments they have so they will be depositing those sediments those sediments are called as moraines so in this moraines we will be having different types like terminal moraines lateral moraines medial moraines etc okay so moraines are nothing but these are the depositional features these are depositional features of glaciers okay so here these moraines are forming as a natural boundaries but because of increasing of pressure inside the water that is because of this increasing of in water inside the lake that is increasing the pressure on this boundaries and finally that will leads to breakage so because of this that will leads to the floods and here water pipeline sewage lines and 277 houses they have been destroyed in the four most affected districts of mangan gangtok pakyong and namchi okay so this is about this topic 
and I hope it is very much clear. And you also got some basic static concepts. And next topic is prey based habitat dictate Asiatic wild dog tiger coexistence say study. So this topic is talking about the study which happened in this Manas National Park. And here we have to focus on this animal. So this is also called as Dole. Dole is nothing but Asiatic wild dog. Okay, so now let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see context, it says that there is overlapping of prey availability. So if you're talking about this big cats like cheetah, leopard, etc. and this uh, Asian dog, so they are carnivorous in nature. So because of this, there is overlapping of prey availability or habitat sustainability or suitability that dictate a positive association. There is a positive association between these doles and nationalized tigers. So because of this, it will be helpful for coexistence of these animals together. Okay, they are also showing some cooperative behaviors between these two species of carnivores. So this is the thing which mainly said by the study. So because of this, if there is no wild dog means so there will be the, what happens? There will be the disturbances between the relationship between this uh, big cats and as well as wild dogs. So actually this dole, it is Asiatic wild dog. It is only endangered wild pack living canid in the tropical Indian forest. And actually we are having a high risk of extinction of this wild dogs. So, so here is a study which mainly done by using camera traps. And this study which is done in this Manas National Park. They said that because of this diurnal, diurnal means nothing but day activities of these doles, they had high temporal overlap with the leopards and as well as clouded leopards. So there is a more uh, combination, more convenient between this dog and this leopard, but there is a decreased connection with this clouded leopard. So, but there are some factors that are affecting the relationship and as well as the number of this wild dogs. That is, there is habitat loss and declining of prey availability and persecution is seen, disease and interspecific competition. So, these are leading causes for the increasing of fragmentation of its population. And next one is the global population of adult doles. It is now classified as endangered in IUCN red list. And if you see the number, the number is decreasing day by day. Okay. So, the number will be like 949 and 2215. They are as per this IUCN red list. And if you see some facts regarding this animal, so it is a wild carnivorous animal. So, this wild dog is a carnivorous animal and it belongs to the member that is Canidae and they belong to the class mammals. And they are known as even Asian wild dogs. So, if you see the habitat where they are seen, so they are mainly seen in the southern Russia part, Central Asia, South Asia and Southeast Asian region. And according to the recent studies which said that, so they are restricted to South and Southeast Asia with northern most populations in China. So they are present in South and Southeast Asia and China. So this location is also very important from your prelims. And in India, they are found in the three clusters across India. For example, in the Western, Eastern Ghats, Central Indian landscape and Northeastern India. So in all these areas, yes, we can see this animal. And especially in India, in Karnataka, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh. So they are also focusing on conservation of this endangered dole in India. Okay, so this is about this topic. And now I want to announce about this course that is May's Answering Course. That is going to be started in this Arthur's IS Academy on this 9th October. That is today we are going to start this course. So this is daily main answer writing course and this will be exclusively very much helpful for your uh, preparation. So because it will be providing you a guide like what to read, what not to read. So how the questions will be appeared and we will be giving you the model answers and there will be evaluation. So, and even in the live classes, we will be having live essay writing practice. So, essay is very important and it is around 250 marks. So, many students, you are facing problems in essay and you are getting less marks. So, the solution for this is you can join this course so that here we are also going to have live answer writing and as well as essay writing practice. And if you see the highlights, we are going to cover your entire syllabus of your GS. 
So here we will be giving you the questions based on your GS1, GS2, GS3 and GS4. So daily one question is given but on Sundays you will be having essay or case study practice. So let me explain you how this program will work so that you will be getting some idea right. So first of all we will be giving you one schedule so this is a 52 weeks schedule. So here we are going to give you a weekly schedule like so what topics or which topics that you have treated in that week. So it will be around 3 to 4 chapters every week and you have to prepare on that and daily you will be getting one question. On Sundays you will be getting essay or case study and after that you have to start your stopwatch and you have to write answer. And you have to see how much time you are taking to write a single answer or single essay or a case study so that you will be getting idea about your writing speed and you have to send that answer pdf to our mail id so that we will be doing your evaluation with a detailed feedback so in that feedback you will be getting whether you are writing a good answer or a bad answer uh, or uh, for example if you are not writing uh, introduction well we will be saying like where you are going wrong and we will be giving you some points that you can add Okay, so if there is any data that you have to include, we will be giving you idea and if you are writing enough content or not. So how you are presenting, whether you are presenting diagrams, flow charts or not. So everything will be given in a detailed feedback and after that we will be sending your answer to your mail. And again you will be opening your mail and you will be checking the feedback. So based on that you can improve. Okay, and we will be having Zoom live classes on every Sunday at 7 p.m. So there we will be having live class, okay, live answer writing and there you have to speak to me so that you will also improve your communication that will be helpful for clearing of your interview. Okay, so this is about this course, how this course will work and it's a very, very successful course that I can see so you can improve your answer writing skills for sure. And now I want to show you one more thing. Okay, now I want to show you one more thing that is nothing but uh, many students are asking me like how can I get the notes of this class. So you can get the notes of this class in our telegram channel. So this is our telegram channel, Rathor Science Classes. So you can get PDF here and this is our YouTube channel, Rathor Science Academy. You have to subscribe to this channel so that whenever we are posting any video, you will be getting the notification. And this is our website Rathor's IS Academy. So if you are visiting to our website for the first time, you have to click on this login or register. And after that, you have to click on do not have account and you have to register. So after registering, again, you have to go back to login page and you have to log in with your email ID and password. And later on, you can click on this course list. And here you can see the wide range of courses that we are offering in the Rathor's IS. And if you are facing any problem in single uh, subject, you can take the course of single subject and price is very much affordable. And you can click on the play course so that you can watch three demo videos without paying a single penny. And this is our main answer writing course. You can join here. And this is our foundational course for 2024 and 2025. Okay, so this course is also very, very useful. Here we are going to provide you the each and every subject and each and every single subtopic of your UPSC will be taught here in both recorded and as well as sometimes we will be also having the live classes. And this GS uh, foundation course which also includes your prelims test series, prelims booster course, main answer rating course and as well as main test series. Everything is included here and the cost here is just 45,000 rupees for two years. So try to join this if you are facing any problem in the studying for this UPSC. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you really like this class, so please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy. And even you can share this video to your friends also. Thank you so much for watching.